Good morning, everybody. It's another new day. We're in Portage La Prairie, right where we went to bed last night. I just moved up closer to the building to get a coffee. Got my coffee right here, and it's time to get going. Let's hit the road. I'm delivering down some gravel roads today. So I went on Google and I found the, the least amount of gravel I could take to get there. It's gonna take us about two hours from where we are now. And we're gonna get all of this steel and aluminum off my trailer that I picked up last night. Last night was a busy, or last night, yesterday was a busy day. I used my, uh, just about my full 16 hour clock for Canada. We picked up a load in uh, Winnipeg, took it down to Fargo, North Dakota, came back up to Canada, back to Winnipeg, dropped that empty trailer. And then picked up bobtailed over to a small town called Brunkild, picked up this empty, uh, this loaded trailer, tied it down, and then made it out to Portage La Prairie yet. It was, uh, I drove about 600 miles in the whole day, tied down two loads. Turn left. And now we're getting going. I wanna deliver this stuff. Get it off my trailer, get on to the next thing. Pretty warm out today. checked all the straps made sure everything was good and tight this is the kind of freight that likes to settle right because it's a lot of little pieces and as you bounce down the road it just settles into place and you gotta stop regularly to check your straps and make sure that they're still tight it's guaranteed you go about a half hour down the road guaranteed they're gonna be loose you gotta or getting loose anyways you want to stop before they get too loose <laughs> Tighten them up and then go about another hour down the road, stop, tighten them up. Go about another two hours down the road, stop, tighten them up. And then you should be good for the rest of the trip, but still stop about every three to four hours to check them. This is a shorter trip for me. It's only a, it was only a three and a half hour drive from where I picked it up and I did one hour last night already. So I got two hours, two, two and a half hours left today.
the show book. Welcome. Hope all your bolts and nuts are tight. I believe this is my turn. Road 97, right? Road 97 North. All right. On down the gravel road. This is the shortest amount of gravel road on my road that I could. Continue take. on this road for six kilometers. I had to go a little bit around, but I wanted to take the paved road. I don't know if that was better or worse. That was a pretty bad paved road. But still better than gravel. Delivering right to a farm down this road. About four miles down. Out here in the countryside, even though Canada uses metric now, we used to use miles. So all of the farms in western Canada and on the prairies are divided into square miles or quarter mile sections. But there every mile there's a road. It's like a grid. If you look at it on Google Maps, you'll see there's a grid. Iowa is a great example of this in the US. Go to Google Maps and zoom into Iowa. It's a big grid pattern, those are all roads. It's the same thing up here on the prairies of Canada. Everything is sectioned off into a grid. And these are called grid roads or farm roads, back roads, farm access roads, gravel roads. This is how farmers access their fields, obviously, and their farms. So every mile, there's a mile road. So I know four miles down, it's the fourth road down from the road I just turned off. That's four miles. That's why country people in Canada still speak in miles, not kilometers. They'll always tell you it's four miles down the road. Kilometers mean nothing in rural Canada. Here's the first road. This is uh, we call this a mile road. It's like, like I said, farm access road, grid road. This is the first mile road. One mile, we got three miles to go. Now this is peace. This is beautiful. Miles and miles away from anything else in any town or city. It's beautiful peace and quiet. Love it. Let's get this freight unloaded. We can get out of here. I, I kind of want to stay, but <laughs> he wants his freight. And we're off with an empty trailer in tow. I have to bring this trailer back to where I picked it up. They're gonna load her up again. Now let's be careful in this valley. There are some potholes here that uh, will sneak up on you that we found on the way past before. Here they are right here. Another one there. Be nice to my truck. Ah! Looks like they fixed a bunch of them already. They missed a few though. This is a little Saskatchewan River, and what do you know? There it is. So yeah, they're gonna reload this trailer with another load. I'm not taking it. I am uh, doing some other stuff tomorrow. For now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go drop this off in Bronkild. I'm gonna go to Headingley Flying J. I'm gonna have a shower. I'm gonna bobtail there. And then, we'll head back. I gotta get ready to do some, uh, some other local work tomorrow. And then you come out of the valley, you're back on the plains. Oh, more potholes, more potholes, careful. Oh, they even warned us about these ones. Oh dear. Well, at least I know I'm in my home province. That 
that's not really true. Manitoba used to have a reputation for really bad roads. Obviously, some of them are still pretty bad, but for the most part, like our roads are pretty good already. They're all right. All we gotta do is get Winnipeg on the overpass bandwagon because they love putting up traffic lights. They love it. Even on the highways and the freeways, the Trans-Canada. But, like we showed you yesterday, that, that whole detour, remember that in Winnipeg? Slowly but surely, they are building overpasses, so they are listening. Maybe my videos are making an impact. I never know who's watching these videos. Man, the Prime Minister himself could be watching these videos. If so, hey, I got some, some things to talk about with you. Things are getting a little tough out here. Nah, he probably doesn't. He doesn't want to talk to me. He'd probably ignore me. He does that. Hey, who knows? Who knows who watches these videos? Maybe some local leaders watch my videos. Maybe some, like, the people in charge of infrastructure. Maybe they watch. I don't know where these videos end up. The internet goes to everybody, so... If they are watching, thank you for the progress we've been making on our highways with making uh, overpasses. Four-lane divided highway in Ontario from Kenora to the Manitoba border. I mean, you gotta acknowledge progress when, it, when, when they make it, right? When they do the right thing. Got a long way to go to impress me though, I'm just saying, long way. We only got one Trans-Canada interstate around Winnipeg, one highway. The main highway through the entire country, the entire economy on one road, just one. We're not like the United States where we have like a, a spider web of interconnected interstates. No, there's just one. And it should be a freeway. Overpasses, no traffic lights. Carmen, what's going on, Carmen? Carmen's not too far from Brunkill. We've got another 36 kilometers to Brunkill. It's like 20 miles or something. Nice little town. 500 meters, turn left on, 4th Avenue, Highway 3. I pull loads to and from Carmen. Uh, I wouldn't say regularly, but often. So you've probably all seen this main street before in my videos. Nice old Ford here, eh? Check that out. Nice. Love those old pickups. Yeah, yeah, I'm already in the turning lane, Karen. Calm down. Even like a cool wind, it's just a hot wind. Disconnected from the trailer, I just have to drive out. Tarps with me here. And it's time to go back. I'm gonna go back to the yard. If you look off into the distance, you'll notice it's getting pretty smoky again today. We've got smoke drifting in from all sides. Drifting across the prairies from BC a little bit, but I think this smoke is mostly coming from fires burning along the Manitoba Ontario border. Got about, I'd say, two or three miles visibility, so it's not that thick, it's not that bad. It's nothing like Toronto and New York saw the other week. It's definitely rolling in fast though, because it was clear this morning. And the wind picked up and it's uh, carrying it over here.
Well, just as I was getting back to the yard, I looked down at my odometer and I realized I only have 12 kilometers to go until Old Blue rolls over to 3 million kilometers. That's just over 1.8 million miles, but 3 million kilometers. So to be honest, I've just been doing laps on the highway here by work because I want to record it when she rolls over to 3 million. It's a big moment. So we're at 2 million. 999,997 kilometers right now. We are so close to 3 million. 998. I'm excited. It's a big milestone. I'm gonna hit the three million and then I'm gonna go to the yard. <laughs> oh, we're getting close. 2,999,999 kilometers on this truck. And it's just about to turn over. I'm gonna roll it forward just a little bit and we'll be at three million. There it is. I didn't know it had another digit there <laughs> because this is three million obviously this truck has gone up to one million before and then when it hit two million it just zeroed everything out and then it went all the way past a million again to which would be three million and it's back at a million so it goes up to one million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine before it resets itself happy three million old blue so that's it everybody, thanks for watching. Another day's coming tomorrow. Take care, we'll see you then.